Hi, welcome to Just Passing Through here on Cleveland Rocks. I'm Alan Green. You know, as a fan of the blues, I really um, I'm excited to have as our guest this week two musicians who had a great deal to do with bringing the blues back into the spotlight. All you guitar players, listen up, because I'm talking about Stevie Ray Vaughan and his brother Jimmy Vaughan. Welcome to Cleveland Rocks, you guys. It's great to see you. I'm very happy that you're here. For Thank Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, let, me <laughs> let me mention that Jimmy Vaughn is a member, of course, of the fabulous Thunderbirds. Stevie Ray Vaughn uh, had your own band, Double Trouble. Okay, now, you both uh, you grew up, obviously, both your brothers. You grew up in Texas, uh, originally Dallas, I think, and then you moved to, uh, let me think, Austin. Okay. Um, uh, this might be a hard question, but what characterizes the Texas blues, let's say, as opposed to uh, the Chicago blues, you know, the people who aren't really into blues? How would you, what do you think characterizes the difference? <clears throat> that is tough, but I, I don't know if there's really uh, that much difference. Except that uh, one way to get out of this question is, is <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, in Texas there was uh, T-Bone Walker mm -hmm. and uh, Latin Hopkins, and then that, we were next door to Louisiana, so which had all the Excello type stuff. So uh, it has a little different regional sound when the, mm -hmm. when the electric blues was really f going, say in the 50s and the 60s. But um, but you have guys from Texas that went to Chicago and made it in Chicago back in the blues days we're talking about, and you have guys that went to L.A. and guys from L.A. that went to Chicago, so mm -hmm. I, I don't know the answer to that, really. At first, mm -hmm. I think there was, I think at first there was probably more of a difference, and now it's more of just a mixed match of styles, mm -hmm. you know? You know, like the uh, Chicago blues is, is usually got, uh, it's, when you say that, you think of uh, the electric harmonica with the guitar. Mm -hmm. Usually in Texas, um, it was mostly guitar players with the horns behind them. So that's really the only difference I can think of, except maybe for the accents or something. I don't know. <laughs> Do you, you obviously come from a talented family. Is there anybody else in the family who's like musically uh, proficient, maybe? Well, aunts and uncles and grandparents and things. There, there were a lot of jam sessions at our family reunions years ago. But uh, now, now there's 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 a, there's still a few that play. We've got an Uncle Gerald that plays, and there's you know there's a few a few that do, but pretty much right now, as far as I know, it's just the two yeah, of us. Yeah, it was mostly just sitting around the campfire, you know, <laughs> type of stuff. You never know. <laughs> Let's talk for a second about Austin, Texas. Uh, it's really a hotbed of the blues, you know. Uh, you hear of all these people coming out of Austin. Um, is, do you remember the, like, the local scene well? Have you kept in touch with the, the local blues scene there? As much as possible. I live in Dallas now, for, have for a little over a year. But uh, what I remember about the scene there is when, well, when I first went down, Jimmy had already moved from Dallas to Austin. And, uh, there had, been, there had been a blues and jazz scene and a country scene, but the blues and jazz was a lot bigger during, the, say, the 50s. Um, or as far as I know, anyway, um, the B.B. King, Freddie King, you know, Albert Collins, Albert King, all these people coming through all the time. And uh, there were a lot of local musicians that were really good that were doing backup bands. And the, the band, a lot of times the musician would just come in by himself and have this hot band from there. You know, mm -hmm. or pick and choose from several, which is what basically Antones does now. Right. Okay. That's uh, kind of a legendary blues club there, yeah. isn't it? But when I moved down there in 72, um, like I said, Jimmy was already there and the scene was already happening. And uh, it was basically a deal where there were some bands that, as this whole scene started getting really cooking, there was uh, some bands that had already kind of settled into their farm. But as a rule, most of the bands would change members every, there was like a cycle of a three-month cycle, there was a six-month cycle, and a nine-month cycle. And everybody would just change musicians. You know, if it got stagnant, the first sign of that, everybody would just kind of all break up and they would all, all start just reforming until they finally got to where there were several more bands mm -hmm. that, that had decided that's who they wanted to play with. Like the Thunderbirds have been together now for what, 15 years, right. you know. And... Uh, Double Trouble for, God, nearly 10, you know? So there was, there, was that, there was that kind of thing that went on, and with all of that switching around and, and working with each other, there's bound to be a lot learned and, you know, and a lot of growth. It, it's a pretty tight camaraderie, right? 
Yeah, and, and everybody's, or not everybody, because that just can't happen, but 90% of them, of all of us, are still real good friends and pushing for each other and pulling for each other whenever we get the chance.